We've still got some of these little cut marks, so we'll put, and it's still pretty thick. We've got six, seven mil there of steel, so we'll go back in the forge a few times, a few times in the hammer, and flatten it all out. obvious now that you see that all those little divots are starting to, to blend out all that prep work makes makes all the difference you get some of these sh sharp little cuttings from those sharp shoulders that you really don't want so yes yeah, looking good gets too thin I'm just going to change the dies on the power hammer just going to spread the billet ever so slightly widthwise so we get the knife out of it that we want and then we'll go into the rolling mill and just even everything out nicely um, and then we'll have the billet and the piece of steel we want for the knife So this is more of a drawing die or a fullering die. It's got, it's crowned, so it spreads the material widthways if you're coming at it this way. Go back in the board, take another go at it. I don't know if you can see it spreading it slightly there. It's only minute amount, but it does just open it up just gently. All right. But after the next heat, we're going to the rolling mill. The rolling mill only moves the material really in one direction, so it will be drawing it out. It won't make it any wider. mega cheap and so I just buy one inverter, I run a lead off it and then a ton of plugs and I got wires running everywhere but hey ho. So actually that one's already plugged in. I'm ahead of my own game. And you didn't even know about it. I didn't even know about it. One of the main advantages as well, as you can hear, not a lot of noise comes off this thing. So you can have it in your garage and your neighbours are not going to know about it. So we go back in the forge. With the single, single press of the foot, it holds a consistent size. And then there's an adjuster on the front here. Adjusts the height of the lower roller, which in turn gives you your thickness changes. There is also a side lever that works on a cam uh, which uh, adjusts the lower roller and you can put tapers in which I don't include on the ones that I make for other people. So they're a little bit different the ones that I make for other people to buy.
have known it to actually part the steel. If it tries to curve on you too much, it will um, try and rip the grain of the steel apart. Um, so I tend to just tiny increments, um, especially at this stage. We're trying to roll it out. And you should be able to see some of the pattern starting to emerge in the forge scale. It's kind of cool. And hopefully you can see the level of finish on the roller as well. Super, super clean. We'll um, just straighten that out probably by hand and then we've got our billet ready for a knife. In fact, what we'll do is we'll put it in and we'll change the dies in the press and we'll put some flattening dies in and that'll uh, just give it one last squeeze, perfectly flat, ready to go straight on the surface grinder. Just flip it over a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, one flat piece of steel, ready for a knife. Just to explore, explain the forge slightly, we've got the main on-off valve for the gas. And you've got this bypass system, which when you shut this one off, the gas will bleed through and feed these at a lower rate than when you would have full gate valve open. That would allow a lot more gas through, and this is the bleed system. So, And then each one of these is adjustable as well. And you've got the five burners to create a nice even heat in the forge, and to be able to turn it right down if need be, and without the, the blowback risk that you get from the back pressure for a single or double burner. So yeah, that's my system. Yeah, uh, it works quite well. This one kind of needs rebuilding now that the inside's getting a bit burnt out. And Every time you build one of these, you better it. I think this is like third or fourth one so far. I mean, we've got our billet forged out nice and straight. We're gonna just clean up a bit of scale off of it. Cut this lump off, which we'll actually forge out another point and make another little knife out of it or something. We need to cut that off so we can get it in the surface grinder and with that big lump on there, it doesn't sit too good. So I'll put that in, I'll change the disc. We'll use a 3M cubicle to prove it. <laughs> um, just a light clean up then of, of the steel on this one. Both sides, don't want to get scratching anything too bad because we'll only have to get rid of more material with the surface grinder. So just a light, a light pass. Well, really, I start with a 36. This thing doesn't really like the two meter ones. It only takes, it, it, I, I can do it, but it's, it's better not, so. Again, all home built, as you can tell. It's a little bit lashy, but I kind of wanted to prove the, the concept before going too far with it. it. Seems to work quite nice, actually. So we get a piece of steel and it's pretty find the flatter side it's pretty good maybe if there are any high spots you tend to knock them off on the on the belt grinder but it's pretty good we'll start it up and take some light passes and we we'll always make sure you're well above and come down to the job just nice and carefully just take big gouge marks out in into the steel then you've got to Got to get rid of them, so. Not a far off clean there, 
Had one somewhere. Yeah. Got a profile, so it's onto the belt grinder. We could go on to the, the bevel grinding and things if you like. Yeah, I'll turn that blower off a minute so we can actually hear ourselves. So we've done the profile and um, I'm happy with it. Do some be bevel grinding now. On this one, we're going to go for a chisel grind on this side, on the right hand side. On the back side, instead of leaving it flat, we're going to put a very, very shallow hollow grind in there with a, a, a radius platen, and that should give us a really wicked edge. All right, so this is the radius platen. It's a, actually like a 98 inch radius, which is huge. It's very, very shallow. You can see very shallow compacts. We're going to use that on the back side, gently hollow out tiny amount of material at the back of the blade here. This side will be flat chisel grind up to hopefully in line with the handle. So you get this very wedge-like, but very, very sharp. Level. This is my blade grinding jig. <laughs> It's really, really very basic. Bit of stainless steel angle with some holes in it. Clamp my blade to it with a tiny little C-clamp. And that's all it is. That's, just, that's all it needs to be. So to be doing the chisel this side, we'll flip it over, hold on this side and clamp it on. And then we'll angle the platen of the grinder and we'll keep adjusting that slightly once we get nearer. I'll probably get really steep to start with, take off some of this material. Actually, before I attack it and ruin a belt, I tend to grind most of this bevel on a worn out that side, that way up. I'm not shearing all the nice new grit off of my belt. Then go at it this way and do all the finishing grinding, hopefully up to about there. So we'll angle this one over. Get really steep to start with. That's in preparation for, for grinding this chisel. So back on with the face mask. because you're not, you're not going to bevel this side at all, really. It might get a tiny, tiny bit of a micro bevel with a strop or something, but you're not gonna be sharpening this side. So this side needs to be pretty much all the way to zero after heat treat. We'll change the flat platen to the radius platen, which is a bit of a faff. Try and keep it as vertical as possible. So back side of the knife, with the belt on, that'll change again. If you stick with the finer grits, so 60 upwards, you're not going to remove too much or have too deep a scratches. So that's my recommendation.
I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and if you are, then you need to know about our sponsors who made this video possible. We have multi-tool products who do the 84 engine and belt grinders, Clark Knives who are a free generation family-run business who offer stock removal Damascus billets, but also offer professional heat treatment service for all types of knives. And GFS Knife Supplies. They are a one-stop shop for all your knife making consumables. GFS is a small family-run business and some of the quickest deliveries for your knife knife making needs, including, but not limited to, handle material, wood G10 liners and pins, the rock blade heat kilns, quenching oil for hardening knives, abrasive belts that can cut through hardened steel, and of course, the steel stock that you use for making knives. Have a look at the brand new things that these guys have to offer by clicking the links in the description, and at the same time, it's a little thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Just a quick overview, we've created our steel, forged out a mosaic Damascus and we profiled and heat treated a knife. Just drilled a few holes in for glue to travel through when we put our handles on, put a couple of holes in for our handle pins um, and I've done some hand sanding as well. So this is now not sharp but it's, it's very nearly sharp and then we've got a 600 grit finish and we'll take it up to 800 before we start etching. Clamp that down. Don't use the same bit of paper for too long. When we change grits, try and change direction as well with your actual sanding. So, so if I was going up to a thousand grit, instead of going this way now, I'd try and do some sort of diagonal type strokes. And then that way you can see where your previous grit scratches are. It's all kind of self-explanatory really, but it helps with your end finish. I really don't like spending too long on it, but I'm also adamant about getting a good finish. So try and do as much as I can on the belt grinder, which is way, way, way faster. Get that good and then you won't spend too long by hand. But so maybe try and keep it below the couple of hours. That's, you know, that's too long. <laughs> way too long. <laughs> And that's the end of day one. In day two, we will add the Maker Smart, choose a handle material, and do a primary acid etch and show you the finished blade. Click the bell notification so you can be informed when the next knife making video is out. Thanks for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed watching Wendon Sharman. Thank you.